Hey, who's paying all these hidden fees that I have sitting over here on these documents? That's what we're talking about today. Welcome to the Utah Real Estate Show podcast, the show where two agents and a lender help buyers, sellers, and real estate professionals to understand the ins and outs of real estate. Hello, and welcome to the Utah Real Estate Show. I'm Tyler Kazare, Utah Real Estate Agent. Jason Christiansen, Mortgage Lender. Eric Quist, Utah Real Estate Agent. In today's episode, we're talking about the Utah Real Estate Purchase Contract Section 4, which talks about prorations, special assessments, and escrows, costs, uh, sorry, fees, costs, and payment obligations, okay? So let's start right away with prorations, the fascinating topic of prorations. Jason, what so is a proration? Is, this is really exciting. Um, thank you, Tyler. You're welcome. Okay, so proration. It's when, like, rent is paid for a month, right? Yes. But let's say you got rent that's paid on a 30-day month, and you're buying it halfway through the month. Mm -hmm. Rent on, is 1000 bucks. Okay. So... The previous owner is going to keep 500 mm -hmm. and then you're going to get 500 So it's now, prorated pro for the buyer. Prorated. For both parties. For the seller and the buyer. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, the tenant paid the seller already for the month. $1, so they dollars. have the money. So this half month of rent is going to come on the closing disclosure okay. to the buyer. All right. Well, that makes sense. And, and that would be true for any... Um, any amount. So like taxes, for example. Those taxes are, are very, very... Rents are prorated. Yep. Um, I, I can't think of anything else that's prorated. But Those are the two main things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So special assessments. Special assessments. That's a hidden fee that can pop up. And, and not, Eric yeah. has a great story yeah. about special assessments. So there's there's two really good ones that we ran into uh, just this past year. One of them is we were showing a townhome and in... The disclosures they actually disclosed in while actually showing it of hey this townhome has a thirty thousand dollar special assessment that is going to be applied to this by the hoa wow now they disclosed that right off the bat and they also said we as the sellers will pay for half of that right off the bat which is the way it should be done yes well not necessarily who pays for it but let people know disclosed yeah because i've also ran into situations well I've heard stories of sellers knowing about a special assessment. Maybe it's a construction fault with the townhome or condo complex or whatever it is. And they decide on how it's going to get taken care of, but the construction hasn't actually started yet, but they know about it. And so the seller said, I want to sell first get before out of here. that $30,000 thing hits. So they put it on the market, they sell it, and they're totally safe, right? Yeah. Well, it depends on what they checked here. So if they, let's say that a, uh, a smart agent checks that the seller is responsible for... Well, what check boxes are there? Well, okay, so we've, we've got seller, buyer, split equally between buyer and seller, and then we have other meaning, like some other negotiation, mm -hmm. right? So let's say in our scenario that the, the, the buyer's agent checks that the seller is responsible for that special Which really assessment. doesn't matter because as soon as you close, the contract's executed, right? Well, except for this one little line down here, and I want to read it word for word. That's the provisions of section 4.1 shall survive closing. Which mean that even when this contract is executed, there's things that will still happen. Yes. So this seller, if they knew about the special assessment coming up, they close, this clause still exists. Mm -hmm. So in a couple months, the new buyers get smacked with this thousands of dollars fee. Yeah. They pull out the contract and say, sellers, pay it. Here you go. Yep. You owe yeah. $30,000 yeah. on this townhome that well, you don't even own anymore. And two different right. ways happen. One, if the sellers didn't disclose that, now they're going to be held liable for a lawsuit because yep. they knew about it because you have HOA minutes that are recorded and they were notified for that. And they go back and prove that. That's why I always just right. be honest. Or, and transparent. Yeah, and transparent. Or they did disclose it, but the maybe they no one really thought about it too much and they kind of hid it through there. But the buyers still checked the seller and the seller's agent didn't read the contract fully or didn't read it through. They could still be liable for it and they thought yeah. they were gonna get away with it. Yeah. So yeah. section 4.3, we've yes. got escrow fees. Mm -hmm. So there's fees to buy a home and to sell a home. 
And this one says each party is going to pay your fees. Right. Now, this is something that's interesting because this can be a bargaining point. So a home yeah. can only appraise for so much. You can only lend on it so much. You can kick some fees back to the seller if you're the buyer yeah. that don't show up. And this is one of them. This is a place where a shrewd agent can be really smart about making an offer appear more valuable or, or more enticing, I should say, more enticing um, to the seller because, hey, by the way, we're going to pay $1,500 of your closing fees or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. where now they don't, they don't have to, that doesn't apply to the loan. They can just make, they can sweeten this deal, especially in a seller's market, you can sweeten this deal um, for the seller and make the offer more attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then we've got, we talked about like ending that rent halfway through the month. Yeah, it's a proration. That's a proration. But then we've got like, what about the security deposit? Well, you don't want to prorate the security deposit because technically it hasn't been utilized yet. Yeah, so you have a tenant that's in there for a year, you're buying it partway through the year. That security deposit is for when they move out. Right. So that whole thing comes over. Should be should be transferred, unless otherwise negotiated, but that right. should be transferred with uh, the contract, the existing rental mm -hmm. contract on exactly, the Exactly, because all that carries over, that, that lease agreement supersedes this. So yes. if you've got someone in there for you, you can't boot them out and say, hey, I'm selling it on Thursday. Exactly. Out. Yeah. Here's the other crazy thing. You've got like a short-term booking, like a VRBO. Airbnb. Airbnb, yeah. something like that. And like you're selling in July and you've got that place booked in August. Yeah. You better let them know and, and find out who's taking the funds from that. Like, cause yeah. right now this could be a negotiation point, right? Oh, yeah. seller, you can take the funds. I'll have some crazy people in my basement and you can keep the money. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you gotta make sure there might just be some miscommunication there too. Cause like the husband may be selling the house and the wife's handling all the bookings and they just don't realize that the date that is, the house is actually being sell, sold, they need to disclose all that, like how everything's moving along. Yeah. yeah, and so it's just another one that can sneak up on you to pay, pay attention to. Another one that sneaks up on a lot of people is uh, 4.3 C, yeah. HOA and other yeah. entity fees upon change of ownership. This is one of Jason's favorite parts of the contract. This, this is one when the, when this contract <laughs> first came out, I had a brand new agent that wrote a contract, didn't really know what was going on. They checked seller on this. Yeah. Now, this specifically says that this contract will supersede any other documents. So if the CCNRs always say that the buyer pays the transfer fees and the contract is checked to seller, the seller's paying this one, it. This one supersedes. This, yeah. yeah, the contract. So it says, doesn't matter what other agreements there are, this is what's happening. So I actually had a deal um, where I was approving the closing documents mm -hmm. And the title company said, no, 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 your buyers have to pay this. Here's the CC and R's. And I sent them back the contract and said, no, your sellers are. <laughs> <laughs> and made, made the agent on my side look really good. Well, yeah. And it made them look really good, too, because those fees can be set numbers like 500 bucks. They can also be percentages. I know of homes that are in divisions that are one to two percent of the purchase price yeah. of that home. And with purchase yeah. prices soaring, that can be thousands and yeah. thousands, four thousand, yeah. eight thousand dollars. Yeah, Th those can be not inconsequential. Those can be big. Yeah, and that's due right there. That's not yeah. something that you. Can HOA's just, not going to wait on hey, that. You're going to finance finance that into my loan, right? <laughs> No, not yeah. gonna happen. Here's the other crazy thing. So in this market right now, we're doing tons and tons of leasebacks, right? So when do you transfer utilities? Well, and here it says that. Well, that's four point three D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It okay. So utility services, they basically the seller is responsible for the utility service up until closing, and then the buyer is after closing. Now sometimes there's some gray settlement. Symbol, uh, sorry, settlement. settlement. Yeah, settlement. So. Yeah, they're letting the seller stay in the house for two months. This says after the settlement deadline, the buyers are responsible. Right. So even if there's a possession of 60 days or at least back this like 60 days or something like that, those utilities should transfer at the time of settlement, mm -hmm. not at the time of possession, which may be, you know, as much as two months into the future. Well, yeah. and you got to check because a lot it. of cities, they require that too. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they has to be done. The owner has to have it, not. Mm -hmm. Same with insurances yep. and things like that. Yeah. So you need to be you need to be aware of when things are cutting over. And then the very last point of this section is yeah. the title companies doing with the money what they should do with the money. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be held separately 
the buyer doesn't hold it, the seller doesn't hold it. That's why you have your title. So company. the title company is going to pay off the debts, yeah. and anything anything left over goes back to the sellers. Yeah. So what did we learn today? Well, remember that section four, it's the sneaky section. All of these extra fees may or may not be applied to your purchase above the purchase price. And so my key takeaway is to make sure as a buyer or a seller that you have a conversation about when these things transfer or, or how much of these things transfer to the buyer. Now it's important to have a good agent and lender on your side who can work this all out and make sure you know what you're doing. Don't get blindsided by a hidden fee in the Repsy. Like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. If you want to get in touch with us, shoot us a text at 801-228-7687. Make sure you mention the show. You can email us at the Utah Real Estate Show at gmail.com. The Utah Real Estate Show is a production of Hive Collective at Presidio Real Estate with support from Security Home Mortgage. Security Home Mortgage and MLS number is 178787. Jason Christiansen and MLS number is 240472, Equal Housing Lender. Not only is this not legal or investment advice, but you should definitely talk to a pro before you make any real estate decision. Every situation is different and should be considered in context. Copyright Jason Christiansen, Eric Wist, and Tyler Kazare. All rights reserved. That's what we're talking about today. Don't drop your phone. Do it one more time. Don't drop <sighs> So good. <nice. laughs> There's no way to recover from that. You feel my legs. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Speaking of that, don't you think it's a little crazy that Tyler's got more of a beard than you do? Oh, gee. <laughs> Prorations. Okay, Stop kick it, it off, Tyler. Well, I'm gonna. I was going. I was about to. Anyway. <sighs> don't get sneaked. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Whether you're sneaky or not. <laughs> If you're an expert at hide and go seek, read section four of the Repsy, and then like, comment, and subscribe to this video.